so bad, it's good. A common phrase when discussing films and video games on the internet. These pieces of media are often made with the intention of making something great, but according to TVTropes.org, something about the specifics of a work in question instead caused an enjoyable, though equally unintended, emotional response in the viewing public. For many people, this defines so bad it's good, something that goes wrong in a hilarious way. However, is it possible to achieve this effect in an interactive medium? The player is in direct control of the story and the gameplay, so perhaps a bad game can be enjoyable due to this. So, today on Games of Reference, we shall be answering the question, can so bad it's good games exist? But, before we can fully understand the unique problems inherent to making this kind of game, we first need to look at film, as this gives us an idea to how So Bad It's Good is normally experienced. Now films, by nature, are a passive medium. This means that they require no input from the viewer and will carry on regardless of the viewer's actions. Technical issues such as confusing editing, dark lighting, and poorly mixed audio ultimately don't prevent the film from finishing. Because of this, when a viewer is taken out of the experience unintentionally due to something in the film, they can then start in enjoying the film's faults, laughing at and making fun of elements like unrealistic acting and odd screenwriting choices. This is at the core of So Bad It's Good, a film unwillingly breaking the fourth wall through its mishaps, only for a viewer to be drawn back in by turning the film into a comedic experience. However, does this translate over to the world of gaming? The main obstacle in the way is the very thing that makes the gaming medium unique, interactivity. A player is, for the most part, in control of the main character, so how that character handles is of utmost importance to enjoying the game. But, very often, one of the main complaints a poorly received game gets is the fact that the controls obscure the gameplay, making the rest of the game very difficult to experience. If a player can't actually play the game, this generally won't bring laughter like a confusing cut in a film would. This is much more likely to cause frustration, as part of the game seems to be artificially gated by the controls. In context of film, this will be analogous to a DVD freezing or slowing down constantly, which actively prevents the viewer from experiencing the movie. But, there are some games that exist that are able to use conventionally poor controls for comedic effect. Examples of such games will be Quop or Octodad Dadless Catch. The controls in these games utilise keyboard presses or clicks to move limbs individually. This style of control makes the main character very unstable in motion, often resulting in a player missing their intended target or simply falling over. The design of these games though makes them fun instead of the easily infuriating experiences they could have become. They use quick respawn time with a little penalty for failure and their levels are open and free from difficult obstacles, at least in the early stages. Both of these allow the player to become familiar with the controls before they are presented with a more difficult task, which is important for any game, but especially so for one with unusual controls. Since the player has been given this freedom, they also have a safe space to enjoy, perhaps even laugh at, the controls they're given. But, this poses the question, are these games truly so bad it's good? These games have intelligent design decisions that work with the controls, and more crucially, are designed with the intention to be comedic in nature. This distinction is important, as the laughter generated by the games is the intended response the designers were looking for. To put this in clear terms, when something is made to be comedic, you laugh alongside the work in question. However, with something so bad it's good, you laugh at the piece of work and mock it instead. Games such as Octodad generally fall into the former category, making them unironically good rather than fascinatingly low in quality. Despite this, many games while being generally enjoyable will have elements of so bad it's good within them. This can manifest in many different forms such as over the top voice acting, an example of this being the infamous line delivery in House of the Dead, or odd business choices by the developers such as Horse on the DLC in The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Both of these have gained some form of infamy for being weird, and thus have become jokes amongst many internet gaming communities, the latter example especially. These definitely show the potential for an enjoyably bad game, but these elements are only small aspects of a larger whole, rather than an overall odd product. In that last point though, there was something very important to this discussion that should be addressed further. The effect of the internet on these sort of games. A common theme on many websites, most often seen on forums and on YouTube, is to look at a bad game, pick apart its faults and present this information to the audience. Often in these examples, the game in question is used as a catalyst for the content creator's own personality and their sense of humour. Famous examples of these include The Angry Video Game Nerd and JonTron. This style of video emulates the experience of playing a bad game with someone else and laughing at its various faults and making jokes about those faults. These videos can inspire the audience to play these games themselves, often with people they know, and have a similar experience to the content creator, making comedy out of an otherwise bad game. This seems to fit the definition of so bad it's good, as these games are being discovered not necessarily by their merits and artistic achievements, but rather from their infamous design choices. 
In conclusion, the nature of interactivity makes it difficult for a game to be so bad it's good, as elements that take away from a player's sense of control often cause frustration rather than unintentional comedy, and this can prevent the player from fully experiencing the game. However, it's still certainly possible for such a game to exist. Occasionally, the right elements can combine, sometimes alongside internet exposure, to make a game hilarious in a way that was never intended. Playing these games, especially alongside friends, can make for one of the funniest gaming experiences anyone can have. Thank you for watching Games of Reference. Do you think Sir Bad is Good games can exist? And if so, what's your favourite? Leave that and anything else in the comments below, and consider subscribing and clicking the links on the screen for more informative gaming content. The link on the right will take you to a video on my friend's channel, Bounds Reviews, where we look at some odd plug and play consoles that are so bad they're good. But until then, see you in the next video.